All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, chaos to clarity, a lot of chaos with this system. Um, and, and, and I think what we've now been able to diagnose that the key is going to be how much energy comes out of the Southwest with this. And uh, the, the modeling is all over the place, and I think it will be. I think it's a very tricky forecast. I have trouble believing that all this energy now just magically kind of just unravels and weakens so much that there's not much of a but a little wave with this storm. I have trouble believing that. I'll show you wh what's going on, and you can see how tricky it is. But l let's begin. Let me show you where this storm is. Um, let me show you where this storm is uh, right now. All right, let me uh, put this into play here. So this is the energy that we're, we're tracking for you. It's right in here. It's this upper level low. It's already come into California. So this is going to round the bend. How much energy is left with this as we go forward here? I'm going to put this on the full so you can see this a, a little better here. So let, let, me, let me take you in here and um, let me turn off my pen and let me, let me show you what's going on here. So here's the upper low. This is the GFS. This is the European. This is this morning. Let's take you to 7 o'clock Friday morning. This is the GFS, the weaker of the solution. Still a closed upper low across Oklahoma. GFS, European, the Canadian. What, what's ironic is, is that at this, in the, at this point in the time frame, it's the American model, right? Let me, let me go back to that. It's the American model that has the close off upper low. You see that? All right, watch what happens. Let's play this through. 7 o'clock Friday. There's the American model. There's the GF uh, European. There's the Canadian. Again, at 7 o'clock in the evening on Friday, it is the American model that has the strongest area of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, energy. Pretty good trough, a lot of energy heading toward the northeast. By the way, here comes your injection of cold air, this short wave moving through. Let me play that through. Watch that come on through. See, it's that short wave that goes across Quebec that brings in what? The injection of cold air. Saturday morning. And you can see what's starting to go on here. Saturday morning starts to unravel. This is the American model. This is the uh, European. Right here. Well, let me turn off my pen, sorry. American, European, Canadian. One o'clock, American, European. Now, see what's going on is the, um, the American model, a lot faster with this piece. This is the key piece right here. The American model, a lot faster with it. This is the European, slower with it. You see, it's how it's back across uh, Tennessee. See that? There's the uh, Canadian model, more like the European, back here, not in here. Now, here's the key move. Watch what happens as we go from 1 o'clock. Whoop! Look how much it weakens. 7 o'clock Saturday. Here's the American model right here. You see all this energy? It weakens. Here's one of the keys. Here's why the European is stronger with it. Because what it's doing is, you see this energy back in here? You see that there's separation between this and this. There's a little separation here. What the European model is doing, it's taking this energy and feeding it into this short wave. Watch what I mean here. Let me go to 7 o'clock. That's the European model. That's the American model. There's the European. You see how that energy feeds, feeding into it. And all of a sudden, you have a much robust area of yellows and reds across Western Virginia. American, G European. GFS European, GFS European. You see that? Because what the European is doing is, let me move this up here so I can draw on it a little better here. What the um, American model, is, the European model is doing is, it's taking this energy back in here and it's feeding into this short wave. Watch. See that? See how it feeds into it, and all of a sudden, you've got a robust area of energy here. Look at all the reds. Meanwhile, what does the, Europe, what does the GFS do during that time frame? This is 1 a.m. Sunday. It's already offshore. Already offshore and weakened. 
the European model, stronger back in here. And this is a lot of, this is a vigorous little piece of energy. So that's the difference. What's right? Is this going to feed into this short wave and strengthen it? Or is it separate and it doesn't strengthen? And if it doesn't strengthen, there's not much of a storm. There won't be. Where's this energy coming from? Let's work backwards. Here it is. It's right in here. Where's it coming from? Here it is. This is 1 o'clock Friday. It's back in here. So it's, it's in the Pacific right now. It's in here. There it is. Now the GFS has that piece of energy too, but you can see when you compare the two, European's a little stronger with that piece, which is in here. All right, so here's the differences. Let me show you the surface panel. So that, that that's the key. That's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna focus our energy on, is what happens with this energy. How much does this piece of energy weaken? And if we get additional energy to feed into it, this system's going to strengthen, a la the European. You see that? That's a significant piece of energy. And the result of that, and I'll show you a surface map, but notice the difference. That's the European. This is the GFS. That energy, nothing is feeding into this. You have this break in between the two. This goes offshore. It's a weak wave, and no one gets five or six inches out of this. So the question is, is what's right? Let me show you the surface map on this so you get a sense of the differences. So there, I'm just going to get rid of the, I think that's the Canadian. I won't worry about it. So here we go. Saturday evening. That's the American model. This is the European. Watch the difference right here. One o'clock Saturday, one o'clock Sunday. The GFS has a thousand three millibar low off the Jersey coast. There's some snow here, including in New York City, but it's not a whole lot. Why? Because the storm's weak, right? And it's moving offshore. Note the European. It's at 995. And look at what's going on here. Look at this heavy precipitation back in here. You see that? And it strengthens even further. Look at the European. 7 a.m. Sunday. 9.93 with a heavy band of precip that goes right in here. There's the difference in the modeling. So it looks to me as, does that energy maintain itself? And number two, do you have additional energy dropping in? The GFS says no. The, the, the NAM, which I wouldn't look at anyway, we're not within 24 hours, doesn't have it either. But the GFS, is, the European has been persistent that this piece of energy, and let me go back to this so you understand what I'm talking about and why I'm going, I, I want you to understand this. If we're going to look at the models, let's look at the models and understand, not just look at the surface panel, but it's all about energy. And when you look at it, this is the Europe, this is that one o'clock Sunday morning. So there's the GFS offshore, no energy feeding into it. You see that? None. The European says, no, this energy is well-maintained and we're feeding additional energy into it so much so that by seven o'clock, it's stronger, it's farther north, and you're going to get a heavy snow band in here. Now, our forecast leans more toward the European. Let me show you our snow map and we'll end. But, In fairness, this is going to be a tough forecast. So New York City, we have you in the one to three. But I can tell you this. If this storm strengthens, you can get a heavy snow band that sits right over you. And you're going to end up getting five, six, seven inches of snow with this. I can see that. But if the storm doesn't, it weakens. Maybe you get an inch or two. Right now, our forecast is one to three with higher amounts uh, close northwestern suburbs of three to six. Right now in Philadelphia, one to three inches. You have to get up into the northwestern suburbs. I think from Allentown toward Reading, we're going to go with three to six inches for now. Again, we're going more with the European solution. If it doesn't work out like that, these accumulations will have to come down. About four to eight inches from Poughkeepsie towards Scranton, 
toward Harrisburg. State College, we have four to eight. I like three to six better, but somewhere in there. Hagerstown, Martinsburg, around four to eight inches, three to six inches. Three to six inches in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, Elmira, three to six inches. Bing, uh, um, Binghamton, four to eight. Around the Boston area, four to eight. Three to six in Providence and Hartford. Most of coastal parts of, um, of Connecticut and Rhode Island, one to three inches. Northwest, you know, again, northwestern suburbs, we have three to six north and west of the city in New York City. Uh, Baltimore, Washington, coding to an inch. Sorry, this storm's not for you. So there's our snowfall map. That's what we're thinking right now. But again, that's my focus. Does that energy feed into it? Does that energy remain maintained? And do we have additional energy coming in? Or is it diffuse and there's no energy coming in? I just have a hard time believing that this energy, which is pretty robust right now, it's pretty robust, just kind of flattens out and waffles into an injection of colder air. So I'm leaning more toward the snowier solution. You can follow me at Twitter. I'm at Um, and uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. Have a good day.